next question. Oh, actually, I think we answered this one in answering your your question, what is Rick. Thing? Yeah, is it like a standard deviation? How would you answer that? Yes, no, maybe. I'm, I used to think I knew, now I don't anymore. How would you answer this? Yes, no, maybe. I'm exhausting you, I apologize. It's too much, the lights are on too. So there we go. Is it like a standard, is it like standard deviation? Is it not like standard, what is standard deviation? It's similar, I like that answer, it is similar. What is standard deviation? Is the, I said it the first day of you class. You did? No, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase the you. Average of the average. It's the average distance away from an average. It's exactly right. So the margin of error is definitely like a standard deviation. It's a wiggle room around a sample average. Standard deviation is a term. That's why I put the word inferential and then in quotes, two standard deviations over there and explaining Rick's question. Standard deviation is tied to descriptive measures, which means we have all the data and we're going to add them all up, figure out how far they are from the average, and then divide by whatever. With inference, when you don't have all the data, we can't call it a standard deviation. More technically, it's called a standard error, but don't memorize that. We'll get to that on Thursday or even Tuesday next week. So it is like a standard deviation. It gives you the idea of plus or minus wobble around a fixed point. I mean, sorry, I mean, why is that? I don't know if that is the best word, but it kind of is. You have this margin of error, which is considered two mar excuse me, this confidence interval, which has two margins of error, one up, one down. That's wobble back and forth. So, I mean, silly word, but definitely kind of accurate in that it gives you an idea of the uncertainty, the variance. So it's what standard deviation measures. Fair enough? Ask me more questions. I've created more questions in your mind. Maybe I haven't. Okay, I have a, I have a confidence exercise for us to do. We have to save the in class quiz for next time. This is Max. About, about a year ago now. I think he was just about just about eight, eight years old when he took this picture. Went out to dinner one night, and one of his favorite games is, and has been for about a year and a half. Dad, guess what the coin's going to be. So he throws the coin. And I guess. And generally speaking, I always guess heads. And he's good for that for a while. It pisses him off after about 10 tries. Like, Why do you always heads? <laughs> and then I try to explain to him, like, it but doesn't matter, buddy. He's like, of course it matters. And I'm like, actually, it doesn't. And then we test the numbers. And he's like, okay, to hell with you, Dad. Doesn't say that. <laughs> he's like, I'll do it instead. He's like, I can predict what's going to happen. I'm like, oh, well, this is better. I can predict what's going to happen. And so here's what he did. Here's what he did on this particular day. I don't know what. I forget if he was calling heads or tails. I was only keeping track of how many times he got it right out of how many trials he did it. So the first flip, he went one for one, which means he got it right on the first flip. He guessed whatever it was correctly. Then he went two for two. So he got it right twice in a row. I'm looking at Brandon right now. All right, four for four. He never got four for four, though. He went one for one, two for two, three for three. Then he went three for four. He got one wrong. Then he went four for five, five for six, five for seven, six for eight. 6 for 9, 7 for 10, 8 for 11, 8 for 12, and 8 for 13. And then he stopped. And he said, you see, Dad, I can guess. <laughs> and I said, Max, keep playing. He's like, nope. He's like, I just showed you. I can, I can guess. I can guess him. <laughs> what do you think? Can my son guess? Can my son guess? Can he guess better than I can guess, which is not at all? Max says no. How dare you? Here's your name. Well, I mean, he has no, Max says no. How can you say no, Max? Everyone's guess is essentially the same. Oh, everyone's guess, but look at his date. I, I, first of all, may I commend you on that answer? I love that answer. Max's answer is everyone's guess is the same. What's everybody's guess? It's 50-50 on any trial, yeah? yeah? If he did 13 trials, I love this answer, thank you, sir. If he did 13 trials, how many should he have gotten right? Be, be precise, six and a half, right? It should be six and a half. I mean, it, how can he get six and a half right? He can't, but he can average six and a half. That means if he does 26, he's going to get 13. Cutting it both in half is six and a half out of... Well, of course he did better. He got eight out of 13, not six and a half. Eight out of 13 is higher than 50-50. He got lucky. He got lucky. Just like, what was it, the, the kid that was at... Um, the ESP kid. The you ESP remember that kid. example? Yeah. They found a kid with ESP. Let's come back to that, if you don't okay. mind. I'll come back to that. 
But here's the deal. Here's the deal. So what Max just said, I love, by the way. Your claim is that Max is not get Max, this Max, not this Max. This Max is guessing just like anybody else. And if we continued to test him, he would fall back to 50-50 on average. You could almost start to see it at the end there when he stopped playing, yeah. right? 8 for 11, 8 for 12, 8 for 13. I'm done, Dad. <laughs> he should have stopped back at 8 for 11, but he didn't. Little booger. I love you. Sorry if you're watching this, Max. <laughs> but here's the deal. 8 for 13 is still more than 50-50, isn't it? What is 8 for 13? Let's just, I, I, we're being very informal with this. There is a calculation that we can do. I don't want to do that right now. I want to get you thinking about confidence right now. That's why I'm using this example. Okay? So if I may, I'm going to leave that up there. And I'm going to redraw this, this, this interval that I had before. Percentage gotten right. Now, we can always play the, 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 the Miss Cleo card and say, well, of course Max is guessing. He didn't get them all right. Dad, I can guess them. Well, then you'd have to get 100% correct, right? Would you feel different about this if you went 1 for 1, 2 for 2, 3 for 3, 4 for 4, 5 for 5, down to 13 for 13? Would you feel different about them? Probably, right? But 8 for 13 is still above 50%. What is 8 out of 13 as a decimal? 61.5. Mm -hmm. so let's get some scale here. Let's make this 0, make this 100. 61.5, so this is 75, 62. It's going to be right about here. And 13, 61.5%. That's above 50, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's above 50%. Case closed. Not only is it above 50%, it's 11.5% above 50%. I'm just going to throw this out here. That's a larger difference than most political polls are right now, as far as picking the president. I'm just going to throw it out there, not bragging about my son or anything. But 11.5%, 11.5%. To which one of you is going to say, but Sean, you forgot the margin of error. You forgot, why is there a margin of error on that 61 and a half? Or why should there be a margin of error on that 61 Was the coin tossed the exact same way every exact same time? Was it? You're asking me? No, oh, I mean, I mean that you'd have to have a mechanical device that, to do that, it. That's true. Now, it's interesting because there's a paper written about this years ago that was if you flip a coin like that, it actually doesn't go 50-50. It's a little favored, I think, towards one of the sides by like 2% or something. But the end of the paper actually said, but since nobody actually uses machines to flip coins, we can argue it's 50-50. So let's just, let's just use 50-50 in our mind. Well, I love that, that statement. But since nobody's mechanically, hi, nobody's mechanically flipping coins, let's just say it's 50-50. But why does a 61 and a half have to have a margin of error on it? Why do you need a margin of error? When do you need a margin of error? When do you need a margin of error? When do you need a margin of error? Always when you, oh, thank you for that. Always any time you draw, Turner, go ahead. I was gonna say, with, uh, whenever you have a random sample. Whenever you have a random sample drawn. How do I know this is a random sample? Because you're just playing at dinner time? I observed, well, for, I don't know how random it was. I watched him play 13 times. Yeah. Why is it not the population? I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about this. Why is it not the population? Because I didn't make him play forever. Keep flipping, damn it. Keep, I don't care if you're hungry, flip. Right? That wasn't what I did. I just, stop crying and flip the damn coin and guess, guess, guess. I love working in the library. They must have me here. The idea is I drew a small subset of all the possible flips, right? 13. That's a random sample, which means I always have to have a margin. So, friends, give me a margin to use. There is a mathematical margin we'll start learning on Thursday, I promise. But give me a margin to use. Paul, you're on, you're, you're on the hot seat. Give, give me a margin 2 to use. 2.2%. 2.2%, is that what I heard? Yeah. 2.2%. Let's use that. Uh, let's make that orange. So if we use 2.2%, or at least we're list margins of error over here. Margin of error. Okay, if I use 2.2%, Max was at 61.5%, right? 813 to 61.5. If I start at 61.5 and I go to 
and I go 2.2%, that goes up to 63.7%, yeah? And down to, this is, uh, it's too much writing. I'm just gonna draw it. It'll go down to, what's that gonna be, 59.3%? Maybe I did that right. It's gonna look like that, right? If the margin is indeed 2.2%, do I feel 95% confident that Max is doing better than most people? Yes. The answer is hell yeah. If the margin is indeed 2.2%, at worst, based on the margin of error, he's doing like 59%, 59.5%. It should be actually 4% of margin of error. Well, hang on, let's make another one. Paul's changed his mind now, and that's okay. Let's change the margin to 4.4 4. 4 or 4. Four. Just four. Make the math easy for Sean. Thank you. Suppose it's four percent. Suppose it's four percent. Okay. What would that look like? Well, if it's a sixty, again, it's still at sixty-one and a half. So we got to go up and down four from that. That could be as high as sixty-five and a half, right? That's going to be up here. It could also be as low as fifty-seven and a half. But, but guess what? It's still above what? He's still amazing. <laughs> He's still doing better than get. I'm 95% confident. He's doing. I'm 95% confident. He's doing better than guessing. Give me a margin that would make you think he's not necessarily doing better. 12%. Than guessing. I hear about 12%. Can we make it 10 to make the math easy for sure. Sean? Old man rule can't add. Actually, it's not the adding that gets me. It's the subtraction that gets me. Let's do 12% and use a color I haven't used yet. Uh, orange, green. But at 12%, they put it below 50%. Won't 10 also? Oh, no, 10 won't. Yes, we got to use 12. I thought 10 would. Yes, 10, see, I can't subtract. 10 minus 61 minus 10. 12%, thank you, Paul, for catching that mistake. And thank you, Katie, for the 12. If it is indeed 12%, the integral is going to look something along these lines, isn't it? And all of a sudden, now, I say, I can't tell that Max is doing better than guessing at a 95% confidence level. So you see, it's all tied to that margin. It's all tied to that margin. So what decides the margin? What? I love this question. I can't answer well in two minutes, but I promise you, we will probably start working on that next class. No, do you hear what Cody said? I love this question. What decides the margin? We did learn one thing about sample sizes today though, right? Bigger the sample, Smaller the margin, so inversely, smaller the sample, bigger the margin. Of the three margins on the board, which one do you think is most indicative of the one we should be using? The 12%. As a matter of fact, I would be surprised if it wasn't something like 30%, honestly. The sample size of 13? Think about that. That's so small. 13 is tiny. You guys had samples of 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, and your margins were 1%. There's a mathematical relationship, Cody. I love that question. Thank you. We'll get to it, I promise. I promise. I will leave you hanging on that one. You guys are awesome. We'll see you Thursday. I always, I'll promise not to yell as much, but I can't guarantee that. I get excited. You guys, you guys make me happy. See you then.